Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com where we show you how to make smart trades. In tonight's video update, we're going to go ahead and do some advanced charting setup for the Thinkorswim platform. Again, this is building off of the previous video, which was some of the basic stuff, just giving you a little bit of the chart setup as far as uh, expirations and uh, colors and col settings, etc. And so now we're going to start digging in a little bit more with some technical studies, adding some custom code that we have here at Option Alpha. Um, as well as any other uh, type of technical indicators that you want to set up. So again, this is going to be a little bit longer video tutorial, but a lot of advanced stuff for those of you who are really, really getting into Thinkorswim platform now. Uh, so again, if we go to the, the platform here, you can see this is basically what the setup is uh, for what we had put together previously. Uh, this is going to start now transitioning us to our live trading platform so that you guys can see what we have, but it'll basically look exactly like our live platform uh, going forward after this video so you can see what we're doing. Uh, this is the uh, Apple stock that we have on here right now and what we're going to be doing here is going through um, all of these different uh, studies that you can add in here. So there's two different places you can add studies uh, just for full disclosure and I don't know why Thinkorswim does this but they have like a study tab here or a study button here which opens up the study window and then you have a studies drop down here which is virtually the same thing except on the studies drop down you have um, the ability to add quick studies and to edit the studies from here. So um, quick studies are really good because these are predefined ones. Now, of course, we do not use all of these. We don't even use 95% of these. These are all just, you know, kind of the ones that are in here. Um, they're off on the side of the screen here, but you can start to see what they are. So like candlestick patterns or crossovers, uh, you know, stuff like that. Lower studies versus upper studies. There's a lot of stuff in here that you can kind of use and just quickly add. What we're going to do for this case is go ahead and hit that edit study button and then you can see that these are all of the actual studies itself that Thinkorswim offers. Now again, we do not use a lot of these. There's a lot of these in here that are just um, ones that have been licensed from different people. They've not really been back tested. This is where having the ability to check some of the back testing is really, really important. Of course, we did this in our signals report, which you guys can access from the research lab here at Option Alpha, where we back tested basically 20 years of data and a ton of different variations of the major, major uh, indicators that are out there. I want to show you guys how this kind of works so you can see um, just generally how these things get added. So uh, a really popular one that people add is MACD. Now again, I'm not adding this one. We uh, we do not use MACD anymore from the back testing, so that's a little bit of a, a bonus there. It really back tests actually pretty bad. Uh, but a lot of people use MACD. All you would want to do if you do want to add any particular you know study in here is just type in this, the um, a cup, first couple initials or the name or whatever, and you can see that it's added here. You just have to double click it and move it over. Now it automatically defaults to the lower range, which means that it's going to be below the actual chart itself. So when I hit apply and then okay, you can see that the MACD study is down here, right? So now that you have that study on here, you can do a lot of things to customize it to however you want. So if we go back in here to studies, again, you can go all the way over here on the right hand side and there's this little gear icon and that will allow you to change any of the settings for this particular indicator. Now, of course, all of the different indicators are going to have their own particular settings as far as fast length, slow length, MACD length, the type, etc. right? And you can change these as you see fit. So you can change it to 30 if you want and 15. Again, I'm just kind of changing them so you can see that they can be changed. And then you can change the plot lines, the colors, etc. So if you want different colors, like let's say the average, you don't want to be purple, you want to be red. I mean, like it doesn't matter what it is. You can end up changing a lot of this stuff and basically applying these changes to the bottom side, right? So it's really, really customizable. Again, the key is just are you using the right indicators? Do you have the right things that kind of work long term? Once you have a couple sets of indicators, and we'll add a custom code here that I'll show you here in a second, but once you have whatever indicators you want, it's really easy inside Thinkorswim to save this entire chart screen as what's called a style. So this style is basically this whole setup. It's the charting, the colors, the indicators, the layout, everything saves as a style. So when you have something that you have or that you want right and is correct and you want to come back here and reference this a couple times, you can go in here and then click save style. So what you'll do is you'll save this and we'll just say this is chart style uh, one or whatever the case is, right? It's important that you then click include patterns and study sets. And what that's going to do is that that's going to make sure that anything that you do here as far as uh, technical studies or chart patterns, anything like that is actually saved in this style set. So it saves the whole layout, the whole look, etc. So we'll just click save and now that's in here. 
And so anytime that we want to reference this exact layout with MACD or whatever the case is, you go down here to load style and then you have like a base one or a chart style. You can see I made one in here for a different video called base 4X. It doesn't really matter what you call them, it's up to you, but these are in here. And then you can delete them or you can save over top of it. If you end up do making a change, so let's say we go in here studies and you go in here and you you know make a change and you say, you know what, I want to look at a 35 day for the slow length and then hit OK. And so this is now changed technically. All you would want to do is go to style, save style, and then the drop down you can save over an existing one. Again, you want to click patterns and studies, hit save. It will then prompt you and say, "Do you are you sure you want to replace this?" And you say, "Yeah, yeah, I do want to replace this." Okay? So it's very easy to save over it and kind of toggle back and forth. Now, of course, you can toggle them back and forth between different time frames, whatever you want. It's all a matter of what you want to set up as far as your chart styles. At Option Alpha, we only have really three to four chart styles that we use. We use a regular main kind of with implied volatility, which I'll show you here in a second. And then we use a long technical study and a short technical study um, indicators because what we found in our research is that there are different technical indicators that work best for long entries and for short entries. So that's all part of our signals research the resources that you can get. So we're going to go ahead and go back up to studies here. I just want to show you what happens if you add a different one in here just really quickly before we add our custom code. Um, another popular one is RSI. The settings have to be really good here for RSI for it to work, but if we just kind of add it in here, the default, um, you can see that's in here. If you click apply, now it stacks these indicators down below. So my thought process on this is always that you never really want to have more than two to three of these indicators stacked below. So in this case, this is one, this is two. So that you're looking at basically you know, a very clean chart. I do see people that look like their charts are just throwing up with indicators and they have like tons of indicators everywhere and it's just lines and graphs and whatever and that to me is not clear that doesn't give you a lot of good indication of where the markets may or may not go which is really important here with uh, with technical indicators and charting and basically using that to determine trades so I always say keep it cleaner if you possibly can um, and that's always a little bit easier so I'm gonna go back in here I'm gonna now delete these two indicators and what I want to do is I want to add a custom study now for those of you who get access to our watch list you'll get access to this custom code so you can add it to the thinkorswim platform but when you add a custom study this is code that you've written in here or somebody else has maybe written that you've now copied over and you want to click on this new button and what you can do in here now is you can basically write out your own custom code to do whatever you want inside of thinkorswim it can be options related technicals fundamentals related whatever you want there's unlimited combinations basically in here so i'm going to go ahead and just type in option alpha uh, that's in here i'm going to go ahead and delete this code right here and then I'm going to add the custom code that we have written. So uh, we're just going to get this file here. And again, you can grab this file. If you get access to our watch list, we'll send it over to you. It'll be part of that package. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and paste in that whole code here and then click OK. And what that's going to do in this case is going to bring up this IV percentile custom code that we wrote and kind of modified. And so this code basically shows us implied volatility percentile range. You can do it for rank, it doesn't really matter. Um, and it gives us a good indication of where we can buy or sell options. Now we have basically hard coded in these calculations for a one day standard deviation move, a one week and a one month. And these are again those 68% probability ranges that a one standard deviation would cover. So in this case, the one day standard deviation move says that every day there's a 68% chance that the stock moves up or down by $1.50. The one week range says that every one week the stock should move 68% of the time up or down by 330 one month by 687 up or down 68% of the time. Again, so this gives us a really good frame of reference. This lets us know that if we're trading a month out, we need to be selling options at least $6.87 above or below the stock if we want to have about a 70% a 70 chance of success, 68 to 70% chance of success. Okay, so this is why we have these kind of hard coded in here so that we can see this right on the screen. Now we've also carded, uh, hard coded in here these different IV levels. So generally anything below 30, we try to be less aggressive in selling options. Anything above 50, we try to be really aggressive. You can see that anytime that it gets above that 50 line or that 30 line, then that lets us know that we might be in a different territory where we can start scaling into positions a little bit more aggressive 
or start scaling out, etc. So it really kind of depends. And of course, if you don't have Thinkorswim, then you know we have the watch list software which does this automatically for you. Okay. So in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this as a style just so you can see how we can toggle back and forth. I'll save it as style two, say include patterns and study sets, and then save. Now, if I want to just toggle back immediately to the other style, I just go down to load style and then chart style one. And you can see it just kind of flips right back easily to the next style. So it's very easy to flip back and forth here between the different styles on these charts. So another thing that you can do inside of here is you can basically add as many studies as you want and then remove all these study sets. Again, these quick studies are really easy in here. The last thing that we're going to show you is the pattern. So if you want to use patterns and show patterns, um, there's a really cool way that you can do this inside of here and that's basically to basically uh, let the system know you want to look at for ascending triangles or you want to look for channels or double wedges or double tops or whatever the case is. So we're just going to put a bunch of these in here and then we're going to let the system basically tell us if any of these are showing right now. So we'll just kind of double click and add a bunch of these in here and then say apply. Okay. And so once we do apply, it might take a little bit of time here, but boom, there you go. Now this is basically shown in here. So the market has determined or the software has determined that this is a range, right? That this is, you know, where the stock might be. So inverted head and shoulders with a target. Uh, here's another one that's a head and shoulders pattern with a target. You can see that these failed. That's why I don't use chart patterns all that often. But listen, I'm just showing you guys what's kind of available here so you can see uh, what's out there. So uh, these patterns here, you can just toggle them off and toggle them on if you want to. Again, I do not use these. This is not part of anything that I do here at Option Alpha, but I'm showing you kind of the capabilities inside of the platform itself. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is inside of studies, there's uh, something called um, strategies. Uh, this is really cool if you want to actually back test a uh, little bit of different strategies. So in this case, uh, Bollinger Bands, you can actually back test in here in a very small way on one stock, how Bollinger Bands would have performed. Um, in the case of Bollinger Bands and most of these, they have what's called LE or SE at the end. And this basically means uh, long entry and short entry. So the Bollinger Bands with a long entry, Bollinger Bands with a short uh, entry where you're going bearish on the thing or, or et cetera, whatever it is. Uh, so you want to add both of these in here and see what it ends up performing like. So if you add both of these in here, you can test them at different ranges, different closes, values. Again, you just make sure that you edit them from here, right? We did this as part of our signals research just in a much, much bigger way. We kind of basically built out software to do this in multiple 200 stocks and like 1400 different variations of you know every indicator. So we really kind of stress tested these levels, but you can do this on a very small scale yourself. Uh, once you put the long entry and short entry in there, you can hit apply. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna show you on the actual chart itself where the security may have sold uh, stock, where it may have bought stock, et cetera, right? So this is really cool. You can actually see where those indicators may have been based on where Bollinger Bands or whatever you know different strategy you're using is. If you right click on the actual strategy itself, you can do what's called show report. And in show report, it's gonna show you all of the different entry points and times and a running PL of what that might have been like. Now, again, this is just for the stock itself. This isn't for any of the options, uh, but you can see in this case, the Bollinger Bands would have made about $2,000 with Apple, just the way that it's set up on this short time frame. Uh, if you go out in more time frame, we can see that this might actually end up being different. So let's do this. Let's go to um, style. We'll do um, intraday our daily chart, we'll go out 10 years and see what the Bollinger Bands looks like there. So we'll go ahead and hit show report, okay? And you can see in this case now, and this is why it's really cool and dynamic, the longer you go out, you can see there's 105 trades here, but Bollinger Bands ended up losing 10 grand when traded on a much longer time frame. So just be cautious about what you're doing and how you're kind of back testing this. Again, the longer time frames are really important because you want to show that it has longevity and can really you know kind of work on an ongoing basis. Uh, but it's a really cool feature that Thinkorswim has and the ability to you know kind of back test these on an individual basis, um, and you can just you know kind of play around with it and see what works. So hopefully this video has been helpful. I know we went 
went through a lot of stuff. It was a little bit longer of a video um, as part of this course, but that was on purpose to get through some of the kind of advanced stuff that we have in charting. Like I said, we try to keep it very, very short and minimal with our charting here at Thinkers or here at Option Alpha so that we you know, can have clean charts and make smooth decisions. Again, if you have any comments or feedback, please let me know in the comment section right below. If you like this video, if you found it helpful in any way, shape or form, please consider sharing this online with other people. Help spread the word about what we're trying to do here at Option Alpha. And until next time, happy trading.